guys. We are back on Buzzchomp. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you. Oh yeah. Lifeline 2 in detail. I play a lot of mobile games and very few are cut above the rest. The original Lifeline was that way and oh my goodness, lo and behold, <laughs> so is Lifeline 2. It didn't just make any old sequel. There's a couple follow-ons to original Lifeline, same character, same premise, man lost in space. Lifeline 2, completely new story, completely new character, completely new genre. The other one was sci-fi. This is fantasy magic. Oh my goodness, Harry Potter anyone? Yeah, I said it, and yeah, it really is. It's very own Harry Potter-esque story where you play along with the main character. It's young Erica, little known fact. I was reading it, pronouncing it Arika for 75% of the story, and then I realized, well, that doesn't really make any sense. It's probably Erica, young Erica, teen girl, A-R-I-K-A, -A, from Portland, Oregon area. She's a magic user, dark magic specifically, carves things into her fingertips to perform spells, make herself whiffed and waft, transport over, Large distances, manipulate time. Erica's trying to connect with her brother who she banished to a safe haven to protect him from the incoming evil demon green people. And instead of connecting to her brother, she connects to you, or me in this case, Magic is hidden in, the, in our world, which is her world, which is now your world, just like Harry Potter. Erica is a teen magic user, just like Harry Potter. Erica is trying to avenge her family, just like Harry Potter. She needs your help to defeat the evil that destroyed her town and murdered her parents, just like Harry Potter. Did I say this is like Harry Potter? It's a little like Harry Potter. Erica has to go to a monastery and steal a time key from these monks, which are kind of like robots, which control time and live out of time, and it's freaking creepy and super weird. <laughs> then she has to go and get a little ribbon off the wrist of another magic user who's, let's call her a mage, freaking possessed at the old orphanage she lived in, and that's even trippier. And then she has to go and get a lantern which once lit never goes dark from a little shop in Portland that sells ancient artifacts and that's freaking crazy and then she's got to travel to her hometown which has been decimated and she's got to destroy the evil. Now there's a parallel between Lifeline 2 and Lifeline the original. In the second game the green people came to her town, invaded her town, took over everybody with their glowing green eyes. It's the same green aliens that attacked our hero in the original Lifeline video game. It has to be. The glowing green eyes, the way that they enter through the mouth, the way that you don't really have function of your body anymore, but it still looks like the same person and they're taking over. It's the same thing. So these aliens came to Earth and then they obviously live outside of time and of magic because they say Erica doesn't understand that her own magic. So you play through this story for hours and hours and hours and then turn to find out that your enemy is the same enemy that you had from the original game with a completely middle of the universe. Does Lifeline 3 connect the two storylines? I sure as hell hope so. This is pretty freaking trippy. This is really cool. I almost got through the entire game without dying. I died twice. The first time I decided not to eat something at the apple orchard and when I went to go do my magic, I wasn't powerful enough. Never made that mistake ever again. The second time, I figured, you know what, I'd done magic enough. Why don't we do a little walking? Let's try to hitchhike. Yeah, I got picked up in a car by one of the green people, and that was the end of me. Never made that mistake again. Always do magic. You have the magic abilities, always use your magic powers. Just like in Harry Potter, if you don't use your magic, you're gonna die. You need your magic to live. You need your magic to live and win. I was extremely, extremely happy with Lifeline 2. I, I didn't think they could top the first one. I didn't think that I would like the character as much. I absolutely liked Erica more. She was infinitely more fun to play, like to, to be a friend with. 
you get to know your buddy. So you gotta really take your time and really play through this smartly. Do you use magic in the antique shop? Hell no, because that guy's gonna kick your ass and kill you if you do. So you be really smart enough not to. Play a game of chance, yeah, you can win, because you're gonna win. They keep kicking it up a notch, and it's the same simple gameplay where you just get notifications and you just make decisions, except I'm so much more invested in this one than I ever even imagined. It's like magic, right? We don't have magic in our world that we know of, and yet this is your world, and there's the magic. And that's the magic of Lifeline too. Erica, Arika, however you want to pronounce her name, Erica Lamphere is my friend. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that have also made her your friend. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite part of this story? How did you pronounce her name? Which way did you prefer? Are you psyched? Do you have, did you ever get to the real ending? I'm assuming I got to the real ending. She was happy and you reunited with her brother. Was there an ending that I missed that I really shouldn't have? Comment below, let me know. What game should I play next? Always looking for new suggestions. All right, peace. Lifeline 2 in detail. Tune back in. More from Mandy and Dan. On Buzz Jump. Subscribe. Oh yeah, thank you.